Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Camille. And this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. Tonight, we're socially distanced as always. It's the only way we can do the show. I'm in Kansas City, but you two are both on the East Coast where it's gotten super late because I've had so many fucking computer issues. <laughs> By the way, we put the explicit tag on it, so you're allowed to cuss. Uh, yeah, anyway, here we go. I'm not even on the right computer right now. Nothing is working the way it's supposed to. But to the listener and the viewer, you have no idea until I just told you. So apologies already for putting that all on you. Act like things are normal. Yeah. So. Okay, the news. Let's cruise through the news. And first piece of news, new Ranger Raptor revealed. So not the actual Raptor that we're going to get in the States, but the global Ranger Raptor. It looks exactly like you'd expect. Uh, And it's it's going to be the same for us. It, yeah, it's going to look the same. We're just not going to get the diesel that they're talking about. So, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> Papa Farley, give us some fucking oil burners. Just be happy with what you got. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, just be glad it's just, coming. They, they just <laughs> killed the diesel in the F-150 because nobody was buying it. Because the, the, they're, they're, they're claiming that the EcoBoost gets about the same gas mileage, but the diesel was five grand more or something like that. Um, Which EcoBoost? In, uh, yes. <laughs> um, exactly. but um it, interestingly enough that engine was shared with land rover and they killed it at the same time so i'm mm-hmm. sure there was more than that you know oh yeah i forgot about that three liter in the they hit that in like the a, discovery yep that was a great engine, engine man yeah. I, I that thing hauled ass well not anymore <laughs> now it hauls nothing now it hauls nothing um okay so let's just hit the bullet points on the Ranger Raptor. So uh, the same twin turbo V6 that is in the Bronco Raptor. So they're, they're quoting 392 horsepower and 430 pound feet of torque, which is I, less than Bronco Raptor, less than Bronco Raptor. Uh, theoretically, it could, I wonder if they tuned it. No, I think they would, they, they would tune it for more towing and for, to increase the torque. Because hmm. it is a truck with, and I think that the towing capacity on the uh, on the Ranger right now is about six thousand pounds, and there's no way in hell they're going to go down from that. Well, the the towing capacity on the Bronco is not six thousand. It's, it's it's like thirty five it, hundred yeah, four. So it's thirty five hundred, but it's I think it's four thousand on the Bronco Raptor. Whatever the hell that that means, but I will bet right you they they, uh, they they torqued it. They, they they tuned it for more torque. So the, that reason. the existing Ranger has a max towing capacity of 7,500 pounds, which is actually pretty freaking good for yeah. a small truck. Um, so, you know, that's the big highlight. And then the other big highlight is that it, it looks like the Bronco Raptor just with much less flare. Uh, and I mean that in the actual like fender flare sense. But Pieces of the, flare? What? I said pieces of flare, pieces which of is flare. A, a movie reference from when you were 13. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Fox live valve, the 2.5s. Then it's got something called bottom out control. So it, the bottom 25% of suspension travel um, is basically ramped up so that it doesn't actually crash into the bump stops. And that's about it. New interior, giant touchscreen. Hopefully it's not the same shitty materials that are on the inside of the current one. And that's Bronco Raptor. All of this is hypothetical because we don't know what ours will actually be. So hopefully it's good. It should be the same. Probably. I like how Ford doesn't cover their engines. You open the hood and you see all kinds of crap in there. Well, but isn't that like, that's the knock on Bronco. Everyone's like, it's such a dirty engine bay. Like you want the sheet of plastic or do you want to see what's underneath it? You cannot make everyone happy. You you would have people complaining either way. Those plastic sure. engine covers are usually just dude, loop and launch and throw them into the garbage or hang on your garage. Um, it's interesting. The front end, the nose of this thing, the grill and the hood lines looks very Maverick. It's much more in line with the shape of the Maverick. So, it The new F-150 has similar headlights. Mm. Kind of, they're, no, maybe. They're good looking. Yeah, I mean... Same, same she, same, same C shape. What I what I want to know what's going on. You, you're looking at the at the European market there, and what what what's going on on the bed? Is this kind of like a roll bar thing over there? What what is that thing? They do that in Australia with the Hiluxes and you know the Amarox and all that stuff. 
it's I don't think it's roll bar. I think it's just purely cosmetic. Maybe you can mount some lights to it. I'm trying to find the uh yeah, it's the exact same as like the 20 horsepower. Yeah. <laughs> it's the exact same as what we when we saw Ranger kind of being debuted a couple months the, ago. They the just, only good thing that comes from those weird little cover things is that the back window sometimes stays completely clear. Yeah. Yeah. It's like an arrow thing on the window. Yeah. That's it. Let's move we, on. We don't get a wild trail. I want a wild trail. We get plenty of other we, we get we get it in that we get the tremor, we got the That's FX4. There's, there's I, I went to configure them. It's like how many fucking trims do you want? <laughs> 1700. Oh, yeah. I, I think the Jeep Wrangler, the, dude, I think the Jeep Wrangler, saying. you can get like 12 models. We counted it once on the show. It's we like went through, we did, we did count it once on the show. It was, it was disgusting. Um, I saw a Dragon Edition the other day. Oh, the it most racist Jeep Wrangler of all. Most racist Jeep Wrangler. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. I, whenever I see one, I look at it, I'm like, did this person actually buy this? Did they look at it? before driving off or it's like this is great i like it here's my 30 grand oh man what there's no way they were only 30 no. you know what i mean They're definitely <laughs> so there's 11 wranglers on the build tool on their website right now oh, but th- we, there'll be there'll be more we also know the, that they're doing the like what was the one that came out last week the Jeep beach beach so there's two more from that. Beach and high tide, yeah. And this isn't including two-door and four-door configurations. So Right. Okay, let's talk about this Hummer because we've been dancing around it for a couple shows now, and, and I just want to put it out there. I don't think we have to comment on it too much, but I know Camille has some opinions. The <laughs> GMC Hummer EV's battery, just the battery, weighs 70 pounds shy of 3,000 pounds, which means the battery alone weighs as much as an FRS and a BRZ, or not an FRS, GR86 and a BRZ, weighs 300 pounds more than a Miata. And it's approaching Civic SI weight, just the battery itself. The actual That's Hummer is 9,063 pounds. Amazing. But here's my question. What does that do to our road? If <laughs> our roads in general, like they're, yes. they're already kind of shitty. Oh. And if everybody switches to a, an 8,000 pound vehicle from what was once an average of less than 3,000, mm-hmm. and, and that's when the roads were built, like, what are we doing here? That's a good point. And the same thing for like parking structures, like are the ramps and like parking structures rated to support this kind of weight consistently? Well, one way to find out, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, like somebody's going to find out the hard way. They, they, only have, <laughs> they only have an 18 inch wheel too. So like they, they GMC knows or GM knows that the thing weighs so heavy. So they're like, put a lot of rubber on it. It'll absorb some of the impact of all that extra weight coming down. What but, are, put that picture back. What is the size of those tires on there? Oh, 35s. Man. I don't know if they're straight so 35s it's, it's like or three, if they're 315. 315s. Yeah. But it, it's a lot of, a lot I don't of know cars. how I closed that image already. Well, I have the image in my mind. What I, there's one thing that I really love about it. Four T-tops. Yes. T-tops is awesome. That is unquestionably the coolest part about the truck, other than the child. That's it. I, I, it's crab it's like, given the the, the current, uh, what's the word I'm looking here for? Everybody go in. You know, climate. Climate. Climate being eco friendly and all that shit. Is this the best application of EV technology? No. No. It's, it's not. Well, this thing should weigh it's, half. It's horrible. It, it's like, what if they brought? They had. They have a brand. A global brand, GM does, that would have been perfect for an EV. Sab. It's known yeah. all over Great. the world. It's quirky with, with the eco-friendly people. That would have made a great EV brand. Would have. Uh, at least for the time being, really before would've. we go full EV on everything. And fighter what do jets. They do? Yeah. What do they do? They're, they bring the fucking Hummer back. That, that died once already. Well, because they know Americans just want Yes. In the, in the pickup space, they just want, you know, dick measuring contest. So in Chevy's defense, like they did in Chevy's defense, in GM's defense, they did make a good vehicle. They made the Chevy Volt. Like it was, it was Volt really Volt. good. Yeah. But no American wants it. So they went, fine, mm-hmm. fuck that. We did that. It was a good little car. No American wants it. Put it in the biggest fucking truck we can make and yeah. see what happens then. That next. said, oh. I love the, the Silverado electric vehicle. The new Silverado um, EV? Yes. Work truck. The work truck looks really good. 
no and the I, work truck th there's a work um, truck spec well th they look like the old uh what was that that suburban cutoff pickup truck what was that thing called Aval the avalanche yeah yes i had and, one of those for seven years i liked i never i actually i don't think i ever drove one but the idea behind it was great because you still had a quasi eight foot bed mm -hmm. you could still sit five comfortably it was really a revolutionary pick it, it, it was like they came, were like hey it's gonna hit the hedge if you have a hitch in it and, and they get rid of the avalanche which which i thought was body gliding aside was fantastic it was anyway. a mistake to kill it off, in my opinion, because the versatility from that truck was absolutely amazing. You know, you could, yeah, like you I, said, I have agree. five people in it and then pick up a canoe and fold the back with I mean, two people. In yeah, it talk about an overlanding vehicle. You could Perfect. put like a tall cap behind yeah. it. You, you could, a raising cap, you could get rid of, you had so many options. And then you, you're not stuck with a five or a four foot bed. You, you could mm -hmm. sleep in it. Yep. actually you know yeah um, they're great trucks anyway yeah there should have been another generation of it but anyways uh so the tire size on the hummer is actually on tire rack it's a it shows up as a 2024 gmc hummer ev and it is a 305 70 18 e range tire from the factory which is 34.8 by 12 good lord that's a lot of meat so so, so what what's the payload on each on each tire? I'm the trying to get the payload. There's also a 305 50 20, 55 22 so that they it's literally gotta be, don't have it's, it it's it's um, low range e so it's got to be like a 3500 payload per that's tire. That's what I'm thinking. So the factory tire is is it a Goodyear? Is it a That's that's what it was on that image before. Empty? Okay. So Yeah, Goodyear Wrangler. Is yeah, 3750 pounds load rating per tire on the Goodyear. Uh, there's a Cooper, a Yokohama, a couple other like Mickey Thompson available, but that's that's a fucking ton of tire. So it's that's, I, I, fifteen thousand pounds. What, yeah, I, I wonder what what tire companies are doing with this change to EVs because the way what, the the weight is getting, I mean, this is the most ridiculous example of it. But they got to be like, hold up, we can't support you. Right. <laughs> I, I mean. They're going to sell more tires right now. I mean, they're going to burn through them. So a responsible company would say, hold on. Well, so that weird BMW iX thing. Oh, yeah, it's 300 pounds heavier than an X7. Yeah, this is uh, a good time to buy stock and tires. Yeah. So that's the news. Um, let's let's move on it's for the sake of time. <laughs> um, hey, we don't get to rush the audience just because I took forever. <laughs> <laughs> so I am rounding out a week with the new WRX and I have many a thoughts about it. I will wait until the car leaves to actually voice them, but uh, it's, it's the not... show will come out much later than when the car <laughs> leaves. Let me, let, let me, let me ask you this. I was <clears throat> looking at this new WRX and, and what <clears throat> throw through me about it, like, like it throws everyone else is the black over over fenders yeah that, that's those don't really belong yeah you see them on the screen here that don't really belong in the wrx mm -hmm. and then i'm like hold up this was originally a rally car that's jacked up on super soft suspension and then it morphed into an all-wheel drive sleet street car that sort of mm -hmm. lowered for for performance maybe they're actually going back to their sort of original formula where this was sort yes. of an off-roady sporty sedan and maybe yes. it should be on stilts maybe it should have those <clears> fenders <throat> maybe it should have you know some meat around the tires so maybe I, it should be a street rally car i agree with you in theory but the problems there are a the ground clearance is terrible and unless yep. if you put a skip right on that. it it's going to get the shit kicked out of it off-road or on even on a, a rally stage it's and, like two people designed it and they didn't talk to one another yeah, it, it's a camel. <laughs> yeah, so the you know, and that car's lower, you know, the one in the picture here. Um, but it doesn't look that bad in person, and it, and you know, the cladding is is just less shit, less paint to scratch if you're on off tarmac, you know, on, on like a yeah. fire road or something. So that doesn't bother me. Um, but you know, this one's on pilot sport for all seasons, which like. It's not really a gravel 
tire, <laughs> you know? So I hope they move back towards that and just have the STI as like a full street car. But, you know, you said the original one was like kind of soft. This one, it, it, it rides like a dump truck, you know? Oh, no. You feel so. So I actually drove the, um, both of the Forester and the Outback, uh, what are they called? Wilderness. The Wilderness. Yeah. Wilderness. I, you know, I'm not a big Subaru person. I love both of them. I actually li- like the Forester better, which doesn't have the turbocharged engine. And I've drove both of them in a snowstorm and they were fun. The, the, the CVT, the, the, they did something to it. I haven't read the details on it, but it felt like a conventional transmission, especially when you go to downshift going down a hill. Um, both vehicles were happy to kick the tail out and, and they, they allowed you to do it fairly easily. I really like this thing. And part of me was like, visibility is great in Foresters. Like it's always oh, the WRX like, too. It's amazing. This is this is just a, a great car. And then if the, I think that the Outback was like 36 grand with yeah, a turbo it, engine. And I'm like, cheap. this is a great value. Yeah, man. like I, I'm like I'm like I should have bought this maybe instead of the Bronco. Like this, <laughs> this, this hold on, I had fun with this car. I yeah. totally. The interior was like all rubberized. I, I'm a big fan of not giving a shit about the car. You can kind right? of get the shit out of these things and not care. Yeah, that's that's what I like about it. And I'm like, I I really enjoyed myself with it, and I didn't think I would. And and both of them, and and I honestly don't know which one I would pick. Uh, because they both have pros and cons, mm-hmm. uh, but I think that the the, the the outback with the turbo engine would win me over. That's I so think much it's, car for forty grand. I think it's funny um, that you compared it to your Bronco too, because the only time I've been in an outback wilderness was the same day where I hopped in a uh, two seven Bronco, a, a two three Bronco in the wilderness in the BRZ. Like I was jumping through all these cars in the same yeah. day, and this one on a gravel road. I had the outback wilderness on a gravel road. And literally, uh, just around a couple of turns, I felt it slide on the gravel and slide right back. No systems fired off. Like, it yes. knew what it was doing. It was so much fun to I the point where the, I was like, I need a wagon. On on the, on these New Hampshire snow-covered secondary roads, I, it felt like a rally car. I was drifting this fucker. And I'm like, <laughs> this is a family car. This is just great. I, so, I was just having a ball with it. That's what they have to do to WRX. Because... And it, it, and it doesn't do that? It doesn't feel like playful, like the way you're describing the, the Barrister I, Wilderness, I, you know? I, I, w- I was so pleasantly surprised with these cars. I, I was just en- enjoying I was enjoying both of them. I got, got yeah, to they, be honest they with you. look cool, too. I mean, I know people talk trash about the plastic, but... They, they, uh, they, look, they look good when the color is dark. Uh, there's a white one in my neighborhood, and <laughs> the, the black that you see under the headlights really sticks out. This one it looks like somebody there's a lot of panda thing going on had a white outback and crashed it and just got an unpainted bumper cover. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. It, it, it doesn't look good in light colors. That was also the piece that when I, so I drove it on the off-road course and like, by the time I got to it, somebody had like bashed in the front of this. And so it had popped out up here. Oops. And, and so it, and it wasn't so much the car's fault it was just an idiot or not an idiot but like someone who was less experienced on an Who's off-road that? course an idiot yeah. that well like he, i'm gonna have to see those people again in the spring so i don't want this person to randomly think i'm calling them an idiot had, for no they reason had somebody riding the right seat with them they could have been a not idiot well they they did have a manufacturer rep riding right seat who you, didn't stop you know them what in time. surprised me about them <laughs> is that they they changed the roof rack, and you guys are into this shit so you'll, yep. you'll, you'll appreciate this they changed the roof rack to add capacity to it but they no longer have those swing away crossbars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. We were talking crossbars separately. We we had a conversation about this last week on the show, actually. Sorry. And I mean, you know, the reality is almost nobody is going to really use it for a rooftop tent. But the fact that it can hold that extra load, like a tent is a hundred and fifty pounds, and you put two people in it, you need seven hundred yeah. pounds of yeah. static load. Um, but it's I, I don't know, man. Around here, I see a lot of Subarus <clears throat> with, with tents on them. Yeah, Are they I gotta being... tell you. Do they have they upgraded their crossbars? I wonder. There is no crossbars. Oh, really? They just went straight <laughs> so, from the that, side that's rails. My point. You, <laughs> you, you, no, you you gotta buy them as like an accessory. So they, they must have. But the 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 the, the what, what the hell am I talking about? The roof like, rails must be yeah. longer. <laughs> right, but, but I thought no crossbars. I thought. Before in the old outback, the roof rail or the side 
the roof rack rails actually sit in the, the roof rails, but then can be twisted out. Yes. Yes. That's, that's my point. They remove and in this, that feature. Right. So now they're detachable for the crossbars, cross rails now. Yeah, but you got to buy them separately now. Yeah, exactly. But that's everybody. I had to buy them for the Suburban because they were like, I want $400. And I was like, get the fuck out of here. I'll spend 60 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Pretty much. <laughs> so, anyways, WRX, long and short of it is it, uh, it's all new. It feels almost the same, but worse. It's always been like that. It's like a yeah. Jeep Wrangler. They're never really, they always feel like the old car. The JL, the distance between JL and JK is enormous compared to the no, difference between the you can the go into a cj and then switch back to a jl and you would know you're driving a jeep Wrangler. <laughs> that is undeniable, undeniable. But, that might be the best analogy we've ever had on the show from yeah, two right. different extremes like you're still gonna know you're driving a jeep okay. yep. Yep. <laughs> so good um so yeah that was the wrx and then the only other thing i want to touch on is i took the lexus off road yesterday with a couple other Toyota buddies and it did pretty phenomenal. Um, got stuck once, had to pull cable, which was, you know, partially my own doing. Um, it was, you know, four inches of ice and so hung up doesn't really, isn't conducive to. Uh, so you have an ARB out. front end on there? It's a uh, Iron Man four by four. So also Australian, but not the same. Also, Australia. Yep. Um, <laughs> I actually say, haven't seen that vehicle. You see, uh, you stop uh, reading stuff. Well, it's that was cool. Here, if you want to come look at it, but yeah, that last obstacle, it, it was an interesting day because there was like the frost was making its way to the surface. So the ground was thawing and then the surface would freeze overnight. So we were chewing through that frost surface and underneath was just mud. Um, and it, there was quite a lot of sliding and uh, and pucker factor. But they call was, them frost frost heaves. They call it. Is that it? It was like frost <laughs> permeation. But... No, no, that's an actual name for it. I think what, in New Hampshire they call it frost heaves. I thought that was on, sure. the, on the road, though. I thought that's what. Yes, it's under the road. The it road pops up. up the pops up the asphalt, so yeah. all the roads are crappy and bumpy now. And then it goes yep. away, and the roads go back to what they were. Exactly. So in the woods, it just means that. Underneath yeah, it's, it's just out there, right? Just muck. Uh, so does that? I wonder if that happens out west too, because like, uh, like when I'm in Colorado and especially on like I-70 and places of Utah on I-70, like every now and then, like there's just humps in the road. So I don't know if that's from frost thawing or probably is humps. I mean, same did you concept, can, no? the the best part is you can always see them coming because you can see where literally the tractor trailers have jumped in the air and then the air brakes lock. They hit the ground. They skid for like three <laughs> feet and then they roll I, again. I posted a video on this on Hooniverse. Oh, oh man. Years How ago. long ago? <laughs> Year, years ago. Shut the fuck up. I still have it. <laughs> was it? Uh, no, the reason I'm saying years ago is like, does that mean it's far enough back that it was redesigned and we don't have images and video? Right. Did we lose uh, it? Possibly. In, this in is why I'm just going through to uh, YouTube on it. Um, and what was amazing about the video is, is uh, whatever, I can't find it right now. I'm not going to fuck around with it. But what was amazing about the video is, you saw all cars, all kinds of cars going over these humps, little lady lumps, however the song goes, <laughs> with, about the <laughs> same, <laughs> with, with about the same amount of speed, but you see how the suspension systems react completely different in all different Oh, that's vehicles. awesome. I'll, I'll find it and I'll send it to you guys later. That's funny. Oh, that's so great. So, yeah, moving on. Chris, what about you? What's up? Um, I'm forgetting what my update was. So... Uh, literally after we recorded the last show, it was like 60 degrees, 60 degrees, eight inches of snow. Or, uh, and yeah, it was like eight, it was like eight to 12 was like what our was. And so like, it fucking sucked. It was heavy and wet and I <laughs> hated all of it. Um, but so we, sad. and then literally the day after that, we were like, Hey, let's go shopping. And so like, I'd been starting to look for mountain bikes and I thought I knew what the budget was. And my wife was like, no, 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 the budget's this. And I was like, Oh, well, if that's the case. Uh, so I bought a bike. What'd you buy? I bought a specialized, I think it's a sport. You don't know what you got. Do what? You don't know what you got. No, I don't remember. I knew it that day. It's specialized rock hopper sport 29 and it's an XL because I'm not it's a, normal it's, size. It's a great bike. We were talking about this before the show. You get the single derailleur in the front. So you get more ground clearance. The 29 inch wheels will just 
like compared to your old 26s or whatever it was, they're just going to roll over everything. It's a great bike. I have, I have something very similar. I'm looking forward to it because it's been, it, it's been like 20 years since I've, I've like ridden a mountain bike consistently. Um, and my, my oldest son got a bike over the summer and he's 13. And then my second oldest uh, at 10, he got a, a more of a youth sized mountain bike around the holidays. So uh, we now have three in the house. So we're at least getting closer to the point where we can start taking family trips. And then I just have to get the, the younger two uh, more into uh, riding. Um, but it's, uh, we just scheduled a, a trip in June where we're going to meet some friends out in New Mexico. Um, mm-hmm. And they are both uh, mountain bike equipped. So I think we're, we're going to try and do some trails uh, in New Mexico. So I might, might reach out to past uh, guests of the show, uh, John Aprali, and, and hit him up with that. Um, cool. I'm producing while I'm... <laughs> sharing the screen <laughs> yeah so, no, I'm, I'm looking for something while, while you No, i appreciate it uh so yeah that's it that's i fun. got a bike cool and cool. my back still hurt from shoveling snow and then i got food poisoning <laughs> what, right what after are you that using so. for a bike rack I, ha- I sort of have a bike rack Good fetish question. or rack fetish so, ooh, so i have like a really cheap crappy bike rack that my dad was like hey do you need this hitch mounting bike rack and i was like sure um i don't even know what brand it is i started looking over the weekend for like because i have four kids so eventually like there's going to be six bikes on the back of the truck. And so they're all so expensive. They're crazy expensive. Kids or bikes? Both. Oh, the answer is just yes. the both. Yeah. What are you <laughs> nuts? Like um, the one I found that I loved was a Yakima. Um, let's see if I can find the image for it. And it was a, it's a vertical hang. That's not what I wanted. Come on, get it together. But it like, it is the picture. I'm just imagining this on the back of the Suburban. Like, this is on the back of a minivan. You can imagine on the back of the Suburban, it's not quite as severe. Yeah. Good but, God. like, <laughs> shit. this is the world I live in, Ross. Like, when, anytime I'm planning anything or thinking about stuff, it's six of everything. Yeah. So, it's just, just go two on the roof and four on a rack on the back. So I know. can't go two on the roof. There's a cargo box up there. Oh. So, if you get longer cross rails, can you move the, this is what, this is what I did with my forerunner because I was planning ahead. I got one of those Alpine Thule boxes. Yeah. And I was, I slid it with, I, it was fairly narrow. So I slid over to the side and I could put one bike or even two bikes. Mm-hmm. If I got lo- longer cross rails on the roof, I never got to that point, but I could have. I don't know if I can do that on the suburban because of how the um, roof rails are. But I know what you're saying about like extending you, you the cross would, rails beyond the edge would, of the roof. You rails. would need aftermarket cross rails. Yeah. And then you would bang your head in them every time you get out. But <laughs> but you could fit more stuff. Well, the leveling kit should help with that. I'm gonna I'm gonna raise the front of the yeah. truck a little bit. Yeah. Honey, we need a lift kit. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason I bought a four inch lift was so I didn't crash my head into the crossbars. <laughs> Whatever. You justify. Uh, I'm into it. Dude, I like but that wreck you sent me. This is this is what I have. Um, it's sort of bent because uh, somebody hit it, um, but it's been pretty solid. <laughs> um, it holds. It, to, if you have four the same size bikes, you still have to do some magic to get it on them. Um, but it, it's been it's been really good to me. Um, that thing is it, it, it's, it's heavy though. It, 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 like it's a good workout. You, it, it's about sixty pounds. And then you got to slide into the receiver, which I do by myself because nobody else in the family is going to help me. And then you got to align the pin. And <laughs> it, 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 it's a solid work. It takes me like half an hour from the moment I start the process to where, the, where all the bikes are on it. Oh, my God. Um, but it's Wait, great. It takes half an hour? To do it by myself? To put four large bikes on it? Oh, okay. You know, like, like you're loading. So do you load the bikes ahead of time or do you wait till it's on there and then load them? Be like, no, no, no. You, you 200 crazy? pounds of no. shit. <laughs> no, no. I put the, the, the hitch on first, but it's okay. like you have to like align the bike so that the handle bar doesn't hit the other seat and, and, and that kind of stuff, you know? Got it. Um, yeah. But now I can only hit three because it was in the down position and someone hit a corner of it and bent the, the last bike holder. Oh, my God. So what I meant to do last summer, and I didn't get to do it, I have a friend over here who's got a, a Jeep. Um, it's a Wrangler, but he's, he's got a Gladiator too, but whatever. But he's got, he's got a winch on his Wrangler. So what we were going to do, we we're going to put it in my hitch and then tie the uh, winch to it and then slowly see if it can pull back. <laughs> <and straighten it laughs> up 
you just heat it up with a torch maybe and and then see if i can unbent it that, i i, I have faith in you i think you could do it oh yeah. it could be a disaster it could or go it could go way. fucking terribly yeah it, it could break off and go flying into the windshield of the jeep yeah it's, <laughs> it's a sad i mean we really really don't know what to expect i'll have video ready for it you know exactly yeah. please the, the latest trend on instagram is like if i die dumb Put it on YouTube, like, like yeah, and then well, immediately you know? delete it so that insurance yeah. doesn't come after you. Yeah, exactly. I it was a rock chip, anyways. Um, anything else, Chris? No, that's it. I got a bike. I got literally bought a bike and then got crazy sick for like a day and a half. So, apologies to the, the guests that we canceled on, but I literally, I took, I watched uh, the entire season two of Space Force, Longest Yard, and something else, but don't remember any of it because I slept most of the day while I, in between throwing up. So, uh, oh, better than puking on the show. Yeah, exactly. I got to go back and rewatch most of season two of Space Force now because I don't remember <laughs> any of it. <laughs> oh man! All right, Camille, where do you want to start? What's uh, what's Bronco life like? Let's let's hit that. I don't know. Let me ask my wife. She's been traveling yeah. most of um, it. It's good. There's a lot of um, people giving you thumbs up and asking questions about it and 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 that sort of stuff. Um, there is no wave. Like the Jeep people have their own waves. There's no yeah. Bronco wave now, just, just, just so you know. Uh, gee, a guy in a Jeep Wrangler actually gave me a finger. Really? And I'm like, he gave me the finger? He gave me the finger, and I'm like, well, that's not very nice. I mean, oh. you are in Massachusetts. He could have just been. <laughs> <laughs> he was just saying hi. Possibly. Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, but I'm like, but I felt very undeserving of it, you know? Right. Uh, but, yeah, the Bronco is good. Um, it, you know, you probably followed a lot of the drama that I had with it with ordering, but it finally came in mid-December. I got the, the uh, Black Diamond. And in order to get it faster, it was orig- original date for it was April, and I got it in December. But and, and when um, did you order it? So you got it in December on day of one, like as soon as they opened the no on day two, on day two morning, because because the first day, they uh, the Ford's website crashed. Right. Yeah. So on day and, two, they, they got it to work, and I finally got my order in. I or or, or, or yeah, yeah. I ordered I'll the big that. band, but then over the summer I saw a press car that had the uh, marine grade vinyl seats and the rubber floors. And I was like, I have to have those. This is the most best thing I've ever seen. It, it, it's, it, it's so stupid. You see if you can find a picture of it. It's so stupid, but it's so good. Um, it's more than like hose up floors because they're actually lined with thick rubber and the seats are just like, you know how much puke, I, my, my kids are older now, but you know how much puke <laughs> I had to clean up from the forerunner and how much of it there's probably still in the carpet. And that's totally not an issue here. And we get, we have a dog now dog that likes to shed. It, it, it just, it, it's, that's almost it, but not really. That is some um, weird seating. Do you just is, have the patterns? Is, the, no, these are the seats from the uh, original um, Bronco concept. Oh, uh, okay. So th- th- those never, those never made it to production. You suck as a producer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'll take that. Are yours the? Are they the, like the blue and gray ish? I have the color? blue trim, but they're like gray and black. Those are That's leather. Cool. Those are the ah! seats. Oh my <laughs> god, man! You're batting zero here. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about Camille today? Like, my computers don't work. Yeah. I can't Google I'm anymore. Jinx it. So you uh, can. Um, you can uh, that that, that whole fluids. interior is what drove me to buy the uh, the black diamond. That 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 and it and it. It's it comes only with that interior. And what color? Yours is the. Um, yeah, they're all kind of boring gray color, but that's not it. I think cactus it's still not it. Area fifty one. Yeah, it's got rubber. It's got carpet formats. You want? It, it, it's, listen, it's black I, diamond, right? Out of terms. Black diamond, yes. Dude, um, I'm so. It, if this isn't it, I'm giving up. Yes, ish. That's a two door, and you can't see the floors, but whatever. People can Google <laughs> them themselves. You know, people can. Yeah, they can. Uh, um, so it. so that's what sold me on the interior, and then with that came the 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 steel black wheels, and the the modular front bumper, which is has pros and cons to it, um, rack rails. Um, what are the, the pros lacking. and cons of the front bumper? Because I haven't well, heard any. The, con- the, the 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 first of all, Ford completely fucked up with the front license plate. 
they fucked up so much that a $75 license plate bracket was my second mod- modification. Um, How much was mounted it? it? Huh? How much did you if say? You can see it. 75 bucks for that fucking bracket. It's an aftermarket bracket, it's metal. but it sort of mounts the uh, the license plate to the to the right of the um, recovery point. Uh, but then you see to the left, you have that open gap where you can remove the, um, the the end of the bumper. So a there was no front license plate bracket, which goes to, to all of them. They mount them like in front of the grill, and it's the worst thing ever. I was thinking of just not going with the front license plate, but I, I just don't want to deal with that. Um, yeah, the other part with, with the steel bumper is that it doesn't come with fog lights. And oh my gosh, we, sorry, we, I googled just front license plate Bronco. They are all over the place. <laughs> like, yes, so you none of them are in the same. Oh. I'm sharing Google search results. That's how bad these are. Look at them; they're everywhere. Yeah, because there is no good way of of mounting them. So the nice. one I have is actually not on here, but you see that this presents a challenge to people. So I found this this bracket that someone sent to me. Um, I don't want to say his name because he's been sort of removing himself from social media in terms of his name. But the bracket looks good <laughs> if you, when you see it in that picture. But now I, I like fog lights because I, I'm I'm particular about my lighting systems. So now I, I got to look for some. There's another set of brackets. If you put that picture back, you'll see the opening at the end of the bumpers. Yeah. So you people, there's brackets that you can attach various lights to it. So I'm looking for one that would be bright enough for off-road and the other one to be street legal auxiliary light. And they would Ooh. go right. Then I have to shoehorn them. In the, because you talk about in this that, space, right? Yes. But part of the hole, part of the opening is now covered by the license plate. So... Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. So, so it, 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 I solved one problem and created another. Is there um, is there any room? That, then you can't you can't go over there because you got sensors for the uh, oh my uh, god the radar stuff. Could you there. do like a pillar ditch bracket style? I lights? hate those. I hate I don't too. like those. So much and, and don't they whistle too? So much. They loud? Yeah, they everybody, do. Everybody yeah. says they don't, and everybody is fucking lying. Yeah, no, fuck that. I'm not. I, I, it, it, the, that's another problem with the Bronco. I can go on and on for it's for, for 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 it's fucking loud. It is both the hard. Hold up, hold up. Both the hard up and the soft up are louder than the Jeep Wrangler with the really? soft up or hard up. How they are? How and they don't have a folding windshield. I don't know. So actually, I do know. So with the hard up, um, yeah, yeah. You see that the, the that that's what I'm talking good. about. The bracket over there. So where, where it has the four pot, it will be covered by my license plate. So I could mm-hmm. only do that two, two, two side ones. Just the left side. Yeah, but I want an off-road then it's light. it's unequal. And, yeah. Yeah. I want an off-road light and a road light um, because I'm, I'm OCD yeah. like this. So you're going to have to do I, these. You, you have to do the light pods above the bumper. I don't want that. No, I'm just going to put two exactly where they are. <laughs> it, 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 yeah. No. Okay. So so what, what did they fuck up with the top? Because that's like... It's not a fuck up, shocking. but it's a design. And then, and then you sort of realize why Jeep is doing things the way they're doing it. So they have the frame, frameless doors, mm-hmm. which are great because if you look at a Wrangler, it's sort of a half door combined with a full door and the wind, side window is bigger, but it's still a frameless door. So um, when they close and when they open, they, they open up a quarter inch or so. Yep. yep. Just to yeah. vent. Subaru, but they're Subaru, also they're, they're also flimsy. If you're driving with these windows like an inch or two down just to get some cross breeze, they rattle like crazy. Oh. And then they have to form a seam around whatever tap you have on there. A lot of the noise on the soft up model comes from those windows. It's 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 not a whistle, it's just noise. It's just mm-hmm. noise getting through it. Is it um, worse in the winter when the top is less pliable? Well, I guess you got I don't know it because December. I haven't had it in the summer. Yeah, fair. Hey, got it in December. <laughs> yeah. 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 I got a top, I got I, I got a vehicle in Boston in December with no it's roof. Soft. <laughs> shows, what, shows what genius I am. Uh, that's funny. Um well I did see the like the one somebody was like they had a Bronco and it was in Massachusetts with for one of those like horrible winter storms, and they were like the snow got through the soft top. And I was like, all I could think about was like my Orf 04 Wrangler with a soft top leaked like a motherfucker. Like it's not, it's a soft top on a Jeep. Like they're not weather, it's they're weather resistant, not weather proof. 
dude, mine's been solid. I don't know what the hell these people are talking about. I haven't got a snowflake in, and I left it out in big winds and snowstorms. <laughs> we we had a pretty rough winter so far, and no issue, man. Nothing. I'm I'm I'm. I see these posts, and I'm like, what the fuck are these people doing? And and <laughs> I, I I even I even opened it up to make sure that that is and. There is some truth that some of them may not be fastened properly, and if they're not something, because there's actually not a firm seal between a roof and a soft top. It's more like a cover that sort of just matches up. You can hmm. put your fingers under there and actually pick it up, and there's nothing really holding it because of that flip back feature. Oh, but okay. There is, but Jeep does it too, and they Jeep don't. Does they, it too. And they don't have that problem. But I honestly didn't have a single issue with it. That's, I mean, that's good for you. This just yeah. cracked me up. <clears throat> yeah, that's just. So for the audio listener, it's the rear fender that all of the mud from the front tire gets collected on the rear fender. And so when you go to open the rear door, it just scrapes off all the mud and snow and horribleness. I, I, I think it's hilarious. <laughs> it's actually, is that intentional? Do they design it like that? Is I that don't know. I, I don't think it's I, intentional. I don't think so either, but I'm like, you know, was was this designed by 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 Tesla in San Francisco? Like, <laughs> People that don't deal with winter weather consistently. So that brings us to another problem, which especially with the larger tires, there's a lot of this shit being kicked up. So it's a problem of front mud flaps. Um, so Ford will sell you mud flaps, but not if you have rack rails, because the rack rails pr- protrude through that. So. You, I can buy the factory mud flaps, which is what I'm going to do because I can't live with all this spray shit anymore. But I have to co- cut a hole in a mud flap to get the the the, the rack slider through it. It's like box it out so the slider sticks yeah, through yeah, it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <sighs> um, but the amount of, especially with with the bigger tires I got, with the amount of crap it sprays up, it's it's ridiculous. Um, what size tire did you go up to? I, I went up from my 32 to a 33. So it's a okay. 285, 70, 17. Okay. So that's, when you're talking about, the, the oh, these probably aren't the Ford ones. I found mud flaps that look like they fit around the rails. Those fuckers are like 500 bucks. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> For mud flaps? No. Yes. And the bottom portion, you see, it's like sort of riveted on there. The yeah. bottom portion is, is removable when you're on the trail, so you don't rip them off. But people on the forum have them. They are cup. They're between five and seven hundred dollars. I shit you oh not. My they're oh my gosh. like eighteen wheeler mud flaps, like with the weight at the bottom, so they them. don't move. But they work. They work. That's um, or you could get a new mountain bike. Yes, yeah, seriously. Or a new bike rack. That was less than five hundred bucks. <laughs> or you can just say fuck it and leave with the overspray. Yeah. But if you look at well, you look at the front, you see how the fenders are cut, where they get narrow towards the bottom. Yeah. Not right there in the front and in the back. That's where all the shit is coming from. If you cover that up, even if you have a mud flap that goes, move your move your pointer down, like uh, it, right to there, if you get something that goes right to there and covers that area, you're home free. You don't need the rest of this crap. Like box out some like sheet metal. <laughs> and in the rear, you get, so you get rooster tails. Who cares? The only the person behind you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Let them suffer. So what else do you have planned for the Bronco? I have a list. Yes. He has a list. You like a list. Okay, and also just to just to set the record straight, you dynoed this thing, right? Before and I after did. Tires. I did, and the idea is no, I did it. I dynoed it stock. I dynoed it on uh, on factory tires. Um, I can pull that up. Now you really like. I didn't expect that, but yeah, I I dynoed it for shits and giggles. I dynoed it because I have a friend who's got a performance shop, who's got access to a a, a, a Mustang dyno in it, which is a fairly standard dyno. Um, I need a friend with a performance shop. We all do. I did some nice things for him. He hooked me up with that. Um, and He's I'm got thinking some cool shit in that shop too. You send pictures in that place. Yeah, I, I tweet a lot of them. Yeah, they have a Ford Sierra rally car. They have an Escort rally car. They got a '70 or '69 Charger with uh, with the uh, with the Hellcat crate motor in it, um, and all the modern subframes and, and big brakes on it. Um, they have like an Aerial Nomad and everything too. Yeah, that he's actually an aerial nomad and aerial item retailer. This is a very Stellantis photo for him. That is an extremely yes. clean YJ. But that, <laughs> so hold up, that YJ, and I put a link to it in in in, in my Twitter. It's got a ten thousand dollar engine in it. It's a bored out uh, four point four point six. Four point six. Yes. yes. Oh my gosh. 
and so supposedly you know, they were they were tuning it but that thing was super clean and it's like you look at it and the seats don't really belong they look like they belong in the cj but and it wasn't lifted but it, had, it still had chunkier tires on it mm -hmm. it was like a perfect beach buggy that thing I, awesome. I i i loved it that's great okay so what what's yeah. on the plan for the uh all right run. i got a list of shit here okay so first thing i did was um rust protection um I went to someone who recommended a shop, who recommended a product. I know nothing of it, um, but the Forerunner was rusted. And Let me guess what it's called. Fluid film? No. Poor 15? No. No, Porsche for one. I, I honestly, I can't remember. I'm going to I'm gonna write about it and then it'll come to me. But it was relatively cheap, but I got to reapply it every 18 months. Mm -hmm. But it was like 200 bucks, but I'm totally fine with it. Um, I got the license plate bracket. Um, so here's the funny part put the picture of, of my car with the driver's side on it again i got um the, the the ford key part that goes one through six the the old school combination lock for the car here's the my funny gosh. part it's glued on yeah it's not mounted into the door or integrated into the door it's a key pad that's it's literally battery glued powered on. yeah i guess so i'm gonna take that off of there and what people do they put it inside the flap of the gas cap yes mm. So that's nobody, uh, okay, you, Mark. You, you see it right there. That's so, uh, yeah. Micah did that, right? Micah Musio? Possibly, I don't know. Yeah, he, he did a whole video on it. That was like his first alt, uh, modification to his Jeep. He's like, hey, you know, these are just battery powered. And he popped that off and he put it in the fuel tank and I, or fuel tank. Yeah, I was like, that's... All, all, all their forts have it integrated, but yeah, I'm going to put it inside <laughs> the gap cap, gas cap. Gap I've gas seen gas some cap. that were replaced with like touch pads, like. Uh, yeah, the, like on Lincoln's there, like a fingerprint related. scanner, like a thing. No, like little like really? capacitive strips. Oh, OK. And you put them under the windshield. And if you tap the windshield, you can still actuate them. Don't quote oh. me on that. I'm not. Oh, I mean, the whole podcast has you on record now. So <laughs> great. <laughs> um, OK, so you're, so you're moving the little pad that looks like a yeah. key fob. Um, <laughs> tires, I got the bigger tires. It came with uh, these 32 inch general grabbers, which are. I, I don't know much about these tires, but they seem pretty good. Fine, Generals are good tires, yeah. They're, yeah, I just no love the. Anymore. I've I've had Ko twos for the last I think more than seven or eight years. I've driven on them in a whole bunch of Toyotas, Jeeps. I made a friend put them on the on his Land Rover Defender, and he loves them. Um, and I just love the way that tire drives in the rain and the snow, how it handles and how it looks. It's just an awesome looking tire. And I put the white letters out because. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. White letters um, out with a black know. steely. Yeah. It's fantastic. It like it's just so great contrast. Yep. Um, but you know, for the longest time I debated, should I have gone 35s? And I'm really glad I didn't. The 35s would have been much heavier. They would have required a ideally I mean a wider wheel. Like these are 17 by seven and a half. You could shoehorn them on 17 by eight by on that size, but you really want a 17 by eight. If you do like um, so a then skinny so then, five, but... so then it's more money, more, 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 you know, more weight. And then um, this is the, the, the Sasquatch on the left over here. Uh, but then you have, you have weird things when you put a spare tire on and you don't have the Sasquatch package and you get a wider wheel with 35, your camera is now obstructed by partially by the wider wheel. And so ah. is your third mount brake, your third brake oh. line. They both get obstructed because on the Sasquatch package, both the rear camera holder thingy and the third brake light are different from mm -hmm. non-Sasquatch models. Like st stupid shit you don't think of, you know? But then also the shit you do, like worse gas mileage, you know, the acceleration is slower. Yeah, exactly. The driving yeah, so, dynamics are worse. So, yeah, here's mine on 33s versus the Sasquatch 35s. And the Sasquatch has like a, an inch and a half of lift. Uh, of, of suspension lift or so. So you see the, the differences right there. And yes, there is a difference. No, it's not much. Now, I was just saying, like, it's different, but like, unless we park them like this, I'm probably not noticing. Yeah. Yeah. You, you would do a double take to see if those are 33s or 35s. It also been identified that the Sasquatch with the 35s has less travel. There's less actual articulation. What is what is his name? Dan Dan uh, Edmonds. Yes, friend of the uh, show. Yeah. <laughs> he he took the uh, non Sasquatch Badlands, which comes with the very tires I got. It comes with 33s, um, 
and he put it against the Sasquatch, and I forgot what his exact conclusion was. But yeah, he 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 determined that the ideal package was the 33s with you the bad lens. Yeah, so the guy, I love him. I love reading his stuff, and and and, and yeah. yeah, it's and, good dude. He he he's uh, he's just I I can listen to this guy just yap for hours. He's he's well, one of those few people that lives what he's talking about anyway. Like yeah. if he's not doing the videos, he's just out driving anyway, like on off road stuff. Yeah, and he yeah. has been on the show a few times, so yeah. give him a uh, hunt back. Sus- suspension tuna. Suspension. Yeah. Uh, who? Uh, what um, else do I got? So I want to do something about the interior light. The thing is dark. Like at mm-hmm. night, uh, you have two little uh, map lights front and back, and the interior illumination. I even have the mood lighting. Um, they, they, it all kind of it's all dim and dark in there so I, I don't know what I'm going to do yet but I got to do something about it the best dome light in the whole Bronco is in the trunk ironically enough that doesn't Just, really help this, so. yeah no um, I talked about the off road and auxiliary lights that I want to do um, I'm adding I act, oh, this is going to be cool do you know what a MagSafe charger is a MagSafe? no this a new iPhone, they have a wireless charger that attaches to this. It's magnetic. Hmm. And the charge from a MagSafe charger is significantly higher and faster than the typical, what do they call them, IQ chargers? Yeah. Okay. It's this, it charges at the same speed as when the phone is plugged in. Oh. Um, so wow. my car doesn't have a wireless charger. So I'm going to put, and, and I'll mention this in the article when I get around to writing to it. Uh, in in the in the factory spot where the wireless charger is, I'm gonna put this MagSafe charger, um, which required me to 3D print a holder for the charger, which I actually did because my friend's son is like totally into 3D printing. That's awesome. and I'm like, hey man, can you print this for me? He's like, yeah, sure, here you go. And I'm like, fucking awesome. So, That's so good. Th- this is gonna be really great, but it only works on the newer iPhones. Um, yeah, these chargers. It, so it's funny in a lot of cars that I drive and have wireless chargers and I have wireless Apple CarPlay, the battery on the iPhone will deplete faster. The, the, the charger will not keep then, then it's being charged. The charger is not too. keeping up with the battery de- de- depletion. So like um, you get in the car at 87%, you put it on the charger and you go for a drive and you get out of the car at like 83%. If you're using the uh, wireless, wireless CarPlay. Apple CarPlay okay. constantly, you absolutely do. And so it's just more of a battery tender. But this, the MagSafe, will absolutely charge your phone hmm. uh, because it's like it's having it plugged in. And because it's magnetic, you clamp it on here and it will actually hold the phone. So it, it, it's, it's, it's got multiple benefits to it. It's funny. Hmm. Apple introduced this but really made no big deal out of it. And then you use it and you're like, this is the most brilliant thing they had in 10 years. Oh, it's an Apple product? It's, it's, it's part of the Apple phones. Or no the shit. Phones. It's, huh. Yeah. It's called the Mac Google MagSafe charger Mag- right now, and you'll see you'll see a little disc. Mag- there you go. Flow MagSafe. That's it. So it's Ross, a it's magnet on the screen. holder. Oh, no. <laughs> I want to see how much it costs though. Oh, okay. Thirty bucks. Thirty yes. bucks, but you have to have an iPhone 12 or newer for it to work. Okay, I have an iPhone 8, so that is not going to work. That's this- a cool idea though. Can you have a case on your phone still, or does it have to be like a MagSafe yeah, it, specific it, it, case? It's got it's it's got a case. Uh, it will work with any thin case. So if you have like mm-hmm. a spare battery or credit cards in here, it won't work. Otter if you have a thin case, uh, it, it will it will definitely work. I'm I'm thinking um, about like the suburban. Like we we have a wireless charging thing on the suburban, and it doesn't even work with my phone. And to be honest, yeah. both of our phones are are bigger already than that 2017 yeah. suburban wireless so, thing. But like if I can mount that for my wife on her side of the vehicle. So if you Google it, I'm sure you'll find a solution because there is. Um, brackets that you plug in that charger into and and it's magnetic holder and so you you bolt it into your car it clicks to the magnet to it and it's stick my friend has it in his uh, porsche uh not make mccann okay and you just come in you throw it on there it sticks on there and it's connected wirelessly it, it's it's fantastic that's pretty brilliant and it's probably a hell of a lot better to use than the uh integrated navigation in most of the cars <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Really so that's that's my next thing to do that I started cool. already. Um, I think I want to put a spare tire lock on it. I don't know who would steal my one steel wheel with the tire, but but it's not going to be one of those lug nut things. Maybe like a cable thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, like it is Boston. You never know. Yeah. Yeah, I park on the street in Boston. So yeah, knock on wood, nothing has 
has happened except for the four on that got a window broken in. But it wasn't near my near my house. It was on the other side of the town. Um, and my my wife. No, no, I was I did it. I did it, and it wasn't my wife. <laughs> uh, I left the GPS on the windshield back in the day oh. when we used to use those. Oh, okay. Um, back when we used to. Use so GPS. if you put a picture of my car and the black steel wheels, you'll see another Ford. Uh, not paying attention to detail. Uh, I got a black wheel with chrome lug nuts. Mm. And I think that bothers me. I think I want to replace them with black ones. It does look a little more retro with the chrome. Yeah, I, I, they look actually, those wheels actually look much better dirty, like, like you see it in this picture. But I'm not sure if I want the, the chrome lug nuts or the black ones. I'm really debating that one. I think if you go with the black lug nuts, I think it would make that, that Bronco logo in the middle pop more. Possibly. Yeah, probably. Like right now, it's just kind of the center of the lug nuts. But if it was only the center of the entire wheel, it would be yeah. a little more emphasis. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't quite um, decided on that one yet. Um, in order to get it faster, I had to skip on a factory tow package. So okay. I don't have a hitch and I don't have a wiring harness. And the only reason thing I would use our hitch for is a bike rack. Um, so I just ordered a hitch today. Not the factory awesome. one. I ordered um, an aftermarket. It was 110 bucks. Um, like Kurt or somebody? Kurt, exactly, yeah. That's what it I looks just put on the Lexus. Yeah, it looks exactly like the factory ones. They also make a, a wiring harness for another 100 bucks, which I was too cheap to order right now. Um, but I will do that just for the one time that I may pull a utility trailer. Is, it, is the truck <laughs> pre-wired, or do you actually have to run the harness? You have to run the harness, but there's a pigtail somewhere over there uh, that you okay. just plug the harness in. In the Jeeps, it's supposedly, allegedly, who the fuck yeah, in the, in the Wranglers, you, you bolt the hitch up, it's like four bolts, and then the wiring harness is like, it's three or four screws to unhook the left tail light, and it just goes into a pigtail right there. Yeah, it, It's like yeah. a 10 minute um, job. I read about it, and I promptly forgot what I have to do with it, but there's a harness that they sell for about a You YouTube bucks. it, and then copy Plug what and they pray. did on the tutorial. Yeah. So that's um, how we do everything. Kurt, Kurt probably has a tutorial on how to do it because they do. They do. For... They do. I just I, I'm not quite there yet. And, and yeah, uh, speedo correction. So the um, the bigger wheels tell me that I'm going two miles an hour faster or one and a half miles an hour faster than at I sixty. Can. Or at 65. actually, all around, I I, I <laughs> just went against ways because ways displays speed on it, and it was between one and two miles an hour. I don't want to know if I want to fuck with it or if I want to correct it. Um, so it, it's showing and, that you're going faster than you are. No, no you're obviously. going faster than it's showing. So if you're showing 60, you're going 62. Yes. Yep. And normally, I would say who cares, right? But then it, I go to New Hampshire a lot for skiing and whatnot. And, and, and there is places in New Hampshire where they will pull you over for going two miles over the limit. Um, the so if somebody else is driving the car because I do have a big family and, and people borrow my stuff all the time and I'm fine with it. But they're, and then they get a ticket for something. They're going to be like, hey, you screwed up the car. And I just, I can't deal with it. So I <laughs> I, I, I got to see if I want to do that or not. If it's so like, how do you tune it out in the Bronco? Do you just, can you just get like a excellent ECU question. calibration or do you have to yeah. do like full custom tune? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I, excellent question. I, know. I don't know. I, there has to be a solution for it. I don't know what it is. You um, isn't it super simple on the Wrangler? Isn't it like a switch so or something? Like you change a gear or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a plug and play. You know what you do is you take a little piece of, of electrical tape and a silver sharpie and you write plus two and put it on the speedometer. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> you know, I mean, I may just do this. <laughs> it's definitely, really, uh, definitely. So I was gonna say sixty plus two. Yeah. Fifty five plus two. Um, so apparently for people who have soft tops of the, on their Broncos, when you fold the soft top back, which I haven't really done all the way yet, you can scrape along the side of the roll bar. Okay. So there is stickers that somebody made, like clear big stickers that you put on the roll bar that will prevent you scratching the paint. Mm, that's fine. It's probably like just 3M clear tape. It's something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so here's another thing I got. OEM, yeah, it, the sticker would go right to where you see where that arm is going. Oh, yeah, that bracket's real close. Y no, lower that bracket. Yep. Yes, 
that will scratch the bar up and down in some cases if you like get it crooked or something. Is that the same color? Dude, I've I have never folded a soft top and not had it been crooked. It, it's impossible. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Um, so another mod that I think I want to do, and I got to talk to the same guy on it who, who's told me about some of these other mods. Um, because my car doesn't have factory fog lights, it doesn't have a factory fog light switch. But I have that six pack of switches on the roof, mm-hmm. the auxiliary pack, which is really yeah. cool. But I want to retrofit a factory fog light switch for my road lights and have them integrated into the factory harness that may or may not exist over there and have them work like factory fog lights and then have the other set of lights work of the auxiliary switch for off-road. That'd be cool. Uh, and then be road legal when you put high beams on, they go off and that sort of shit. Yeah, that sounds like um, a, a That's lot just of me being wiring. OCD and 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 just no, no other reason. That the, um, What you're talking about there is something I've always wanted to do is have additional lighting. So like when the high beams kick on, the LEDs yeah. would then also kick on. Say that again? So like when when the so the suburban has automatic high beams, yeah. So when the truck kicks to the automatic high beams, I'd also like fog to have some stuff. yeah. Well, not not fog lights, but I I want to I wanted a behind the grill light bar for throwing yeah. light farther down the road as well. That would also kick yeah. on. Could you just I know it, my, I know it's yeah. possible. I just haven't figured it out yet. Invert like the polarity on something. yeah. It's a relay switch. Yeah, just yeah. do a relay switch. And swap it so the fog lights stay on, and you just run. Twenty it. years ago, I could draw the di- diagram off the top of my head. But that, that's gone. Aren't you an engineer? <laughs> yeah, pathetically. <laughs> um, so, so that's what I want. So, here's the funny thing: the, the setup I'm talking about is exactly what's on the new Ford Raptor. If if you get the new Ford Raptor, the F-150 Raptor, not the other Raptors, with the, the, there's a package that gives you two lights on the bottom of the bumper, exactly where I would put those two lights. One of them comes on with the ignition on, no matter what happens to the rest of the lights, it stays on with high beams and it stays on when you turn off all the lights. And the other one is a conventional fog light. Um, no, that's not it. Yeah. Uh, this, is a, this is aftermarket <laughs> stuff. Um, if you go to the Ford website, the build your own, you'll see it. That, that's the fastest way. Uh, and that, that's a real neat setup. Uh, and this is, I, th- I think, the second vehicle or third vehicle that I see that has off-road lights from the factory no, it's the first vehicle that has off-road lights from the factory that work independent of any other lights. A fun oh. thing about the, you remember the Nissan Xterra had like lights yeah. on the on the roof. Yeah. And the only time they would you would be able to turn them on is when your high beams were on, and only then that you could actually power them with the extra switch. Because uh, they didn't want. Because they're thinking blinded. if you have high beams on, you're already fucking everybody else on the road, so you might as well fuck them up some more with the roof lights. <laughs> Um, if you're that but, asshole, you're, yeah, you're going to be just, that just asshole go all the way, way right? Yeah. Um, and that that seems to be hmm. uh, that that I've I've seen that in, in in other like quasi factory setups, but in the new Raptor, you can keep the off road lights, which is not that bright, on it at any point. Um, so anyway, that's something I want to do. Um, I might want to do a rack slider that has steps in it. Kickouts? Uh, do you want to go with a kickout yeah. or? Just straight. Sides. I want them to kick out because my forerunner. I, I I don't know if you've seen pictures of it, but it, I had those huge, heavy ass Lee rock sliders. Mm-hmm. They were actually a, like a running board. You could put a jack under them. Really heavy duty things. Fantastic. They cost me like twelve hundred dollars and then another. Nothing one. from Slee is cheap. <laughs> but they were they were fucking great, and they stuck yeah. out like four inches, and that fucking thing got si- side swiped at least twice. And there was one scratch on it and nothing on the other side. Mm-hmm. And like a three series needed a headlight, a fender, and some other stuff. And and, and they were they were great. And again, I live in sort of a, a this, rough driving area, you know. Is this the forerunner you just sold? Yeah. So this image? Where did you end up selling oh. that thing? Uh, yes, you can see the rack sliders. Oh, right those there. are some that's a fucking lot of slider. Dude, that's a lot of slider. They were heavy. They were like three hundred pounds, both of them. Holy shit. And, just and they bolted directly stuff. to the frame. And when you said stick out four inches, and you said so before talking about for the Bronco, I was worried about the steps that then come down. No, that people no, no, call no, rock I, catchers. I, no, fuck that. No. Yeah, no, I, I like I, these. I, ideally, I think ARB makes a set for for the Bronco, but ideally, I would have exactly the same thing on the Bronco um, because it functions as a step and and a side impact protection. Mm-hmm. Like you know. 
So they um, still make those and they fit the Lexus, the sliders. They are 1400 bucks, which is a lot for sliders. You know something? I I didn't know. I bet you it's the same part number. It is. <laughs> it's the same exact. I mean, everything GX is. Well, listen, we could have unbolted them for my Forerunner. Uh, I literally kind of gave them away. Yeah, to the heart. Well, I, dude, okay. I would have done. I would have done that. It's like I didn't want to bother unbolting them and then selling them. But yeah. if I knew someone, I, I would have <sighs> totally done that. Oh well. Shit. I'm sorry. That's okay. I don't. When did you? I don't know if I actually had the Lexus when you sold the. I, it was picked up uh, like around Christmas time. Summer. Oh Christmas yeah. Time. Oh well. Moving on. I'll Sorry. remind you of Jan- it a few more times. January sixth, yeah. that got on a trailer. Yeah. Exactly. Well, um, let's, let's not. Uh... I would love to do. I want to do the mat flaps, like I mentioned. I want to do some kind of an air compressor because I could have used air on board so many times, not just for tires, but like for bicycles, for floaties, for for all kind. When you have kids, you you come. You, it's always needed, and I, and I'm like when I have to pump up a floaty, I'm just like about to die afterwards, you know? Um, so, but I want an air compressor that ideally, I mean, I, I um, love this. Dual one. ARB. Yeah. yeah that, well, this, this one was Maybe with a Bronco a, mount. Double yeah, I know, <laughs> but the, the mount itself is like $250, which tells yeah. you how much the compressor is. It's a piece of metal. Um, that's, that's a bit much for me, I think, because I mean, I guess you're fine inflating all four tires at the same time. That would be great. But I love those. But yeah, ideally, I would want to hide it somewhere, uh, either under a passenger seat or under the hood. Mm. Uh, whatever. Do hood. Um, because if it's under the passenger seat, if you got to fuck with it, then you got to take the seat out. Whoa. Sorry. Yeah. I just found one on the, from a, a Bronco Forum. Of it's it's un- mounted under the vehicle. Dude. Some people do that underneath that is the deep. spare tire would live. That's, well, that's a horrible idea, that's especially horrible with that line coming out. Yeah, that's a horrible spot. Only Why if it lives. Like, they drill through the body? Only if it lived I, above a skid plate. I don't know. I can't see. What that's, what am I looking at here? I see an exhaust pipe on the left. Yep. What is the what is the thing coming out on the right? It looks like kind a, of a hose. It looks like a coolant line of something. Yeah. Yeah. And the left Where looks like this? cat because it's got that heat shield. Yeah. I don't know. I, I That's don't not know good. This is. That's not good. But you can see there's like like water spots on the cha- on the on the body. Yeah. Yeah, that that's it's exposed. Um, <laughs> I mean, it does look like it, it has to get hit by uh, other important things look like yeah. they would get hit first. So but it's, it's not gonna funny. be out of the elements. Yeah. It's funny. When I was doing the undercoating, I had the thing on the lift and I was sort of inspecting it. There's a lot of wires and connectors on the Bronco that feel like they're exposed. Mm. I'm sure they tested it and 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 you know and and I'm sure it's rugged, but look wise, it's I, I'm like uh, I think it was a speed sensor or something in a differential. What what sensor do you have in a differential? That that was just like it's just two wires coming in. And I'm like okay. So I just found that post on the Bronco forum and it says it was mounted by drilling holes up through the body and bolting everything in underneath the rear factory carpet. Uh, no, thank you. No. <laughs> it's a big old no. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, well, it was a two this, is why, this is why I don't read forums anymore. Yeah. Right? I, I, I just can't. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much my list, uh, and I want to get a hard top. Um, but again, Ford can't get their shit together, and they have to build a new factory for for it to open. Um, the hard top is interesting. So I'm driving actually a Bronco right now, a, a press loaner, which is you saw the pictures of it with, with the blue one, yep. and it's a com- oh, completely one. opposite. Nice. It's a completely opposite model of mine because it's a two door, it's a V6, it's got a hard top. It's got the Sasquatch package. It's got the big screen. It's got leather seats and carpeting. It's very much completely the opposite of it. Hmm. Um, and so it's kind of fun to compare them. Um, but that hardtop, uh, the, for even the first time I drove a Bronco, it was a four-door hardtop. 
if you look at the Jeep Wrangler hardtop, which kind of everybody knows by now, and the Bronco, you it, they're made by the same company. They're made in the same factory, but the design is completely different. The Bronco one is thinner. It's much lighter. And I think it's part of part of part of the problem with it is that it's lighter and thinner. And mm-hmm. and this is why it may be weaker. Maybe this is why they why it's also louder. Maybe this is why I don't know if you remember they they the headliner was optional for the hardtop mm-hmm. and then they sort of just threw it in there. Yeah. So <laughs> is oh, it sorry, dying here. Was it um designed to be lighter so that it was easier to take off, or was it designed to be lighter because it to save cost because we know i it's... think i think all of the above which makes okay. sense but i don't think it's it, it, the quality of it on the inside wasn't that great there's people complaining about sealing properly which obviously i don't have a hard top but there is wind noise coming from it um the jeep feels more solid and i spent i think 40 minutes talking to jim jim morrison from jeep about the Bronco, which he'll tell you he's never been in one. Um, I, I don't know if you guys had you guys had someone from Jeep on the show, but Jim Mar- Jim Mar- Jim Morrison is is the head of of the Jeep brand, great guy, and um and he said to me that what Ford did with the hardtop on the on the four door model, the modular, you have the three two pieces, the the, mm-hmm. the freedom two freedom panel like things, and then you have the big piece over the rear seat. He said he couldn't do that in, in the Wrangler, uh, where it wouldn't cause problems. And you know, going back to what I said in the beginning, Jeep doesn't offer these frameless doors, but Jeep doors are solid. There is no air air getting in. There's no vibration. Mm-hmm. There's no there's no shaking. So, yeah, maybe Jeep but, hasn't progressed much, but in in a sense, their solution is sort of better from like the quality and yeah, end user perspective versus versus mm-hmm. this. Yes, the, these, the when you open the the window all the way down. It is super cool to have a frameless door. So I'm looking to that in the summer versus having the big small the small windows in the Jeep Wrangler with the big frame around it. And they did that um, so they could, you know, throw the claim out there that it the doors fit in the trunk. Yes. And that that's a great idea. I love the frameless doors. I great just idea. Yes. I, I and I own the fucking thing, right? But I just <laughs> don't know how it's gonna work five ten years from now it's not going to yeah. be a forerunner i'll tell you that yeah. not much um, is slang bruisers yeah so so i see i see that as 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 sort of well they did it let's see where it goes but it's not ideal interesting do you guys, do you guys think no I, I don't know it's a dumb question i, I just what? think no shoot we'll give you a dumb answer with the reinvention of, of the Bronco coming in and the JL selling more than they've ever sold before, why hasn't Toyota kind of come back with a better Jeep like FJ concept? Because, because they're, they're selling every foreigner they build and more. That's one thing. But for 25 over. <laughs> but Toyota is very conservative. Right. With with, yeah. with their design, with technology, especially in the Land Cruiser. <laughs> And in the Forerunner, they build their name on dependability. So they are extremely careful about putting any kind of new technology on it. I mean, it was two years ago that it just got CarPlay in the <laughs> Forerunner, you know? Yeah. Um, stupid stuff like that. It wasn't until, I think, 2019 when they got uh, the, the radar for the dynamic cruise control in there mm-hmm. and, and, the, and the active braking. And I think they do it because they want to make, make sure to, to test and beat the crap out of everything and have it. They don't want to lose the dependability of it. You know, last thing they want is, is customers report come, come over and say, uh, hey, the Toyota, this keeps breaking on a Toyota or something, you know. Mm-hmm. So we just have to hope that that little blue thing is going to be the closest thing. That little concept that was the EV. Oh, it's going to be a Bronco Sport competitor at best. So hold up. Bronco Sport, uh, my sister-in-law got one. I, I kind of suggested it to her. That thing is really cool. I, I, okay. I like it, man. Okay. It, it, I haven't it, been in one yet. But it, it's like the Subaru Outback. You know, just because you have a crossover-ish vehicle doesn't mean that it's going to suck. Mm-hmm. Um, it's ec- excellent from like a user, very like functional. The seats are comfortable. You, you have all kinds of hooks and stuff in, in the back of it you can you still have a roof rack functionality wise it's 
eighty percent of what the big Bronco is. Fuck the the reason why I want a hard top, you 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 know, is because I can't put a roof rack on my car. Right. Right. Um, and I actually need it because I go skiing all the time, you know. So I I, I want to I need a rack, and mm-hmm. and this thing comes with it. Um, it it drives fine. It's got it, if you sit in it, you have the same kind of flat hood in front of you as a big Bronco. That thing is is really cool. I I'm I encourage people to to you know not poo poo on it and check it out even with the three cylinder. I gotta spend some time on one. I, I've you know sat in them but never really driven one. You you it's it's funny you you you, you got to live with them for a little bit and and they mm-hmm. become really in, in, enjoyable. I, I, I totally like it. And and I don't like it because I'm some kind of a Ford fanboy, which I'm definitely not, or because I'm a Bronco. It's it's a cool product. Yeah. It's it's a great replacement for the escape. This, the escape isn't bad either, but it's not. It's but a I, car now though. I'm starting to see more and more white Bronco sports with like no tent that somebody has purchased as a fleet vehicle. Like yeah. I'm certain. Like I would, I would say like the driver's ed program had them all over the summer last summer, but now every time I turn around, like there's that's, three. That's interesting because you can buy an escape a lot easier than the Bronco sport. Oh, and cheaper. The yeah. Play. yeah. Uh, that's a great car to le- to learn on though, because the, again, like, yeah, the, the, the hood just ends. You see exactly where it is. Mm-hmm. And you see exactly where the back end is too. Yeah. So, um, what else did you have on the agenda for? Oh, really, really, really quickly. The fuel economy on a V6 Bronco is better than on the four cylinder. The V6 <laughs> is quieter at speed than a four cylinder. Um, I think that V6 is going to sound great with an aftermarket exhaust. I think the three liter uh, Bronco Raptor, if the exhaust is anything like the Raptor F150, which it will be, oh, that I think rowdy. it's going to sound great. It's supposed Clean. to have. Four modes, I think it was like. Yeah, so so I drove the F one fifty Raptor, and the last mode is Baja mode. Yeah, and they say don't don't use it on the street; it's technically it's not street obnoxious. legal. The problem with it is you can't hear it from inside the car. Oh, from outside oh. hear you. It's sort of like you got this Maserati thing where you're obnoxious to other yeah. people, but unlike the Wrangler V eight that everybody hears. <laughs> oh man, dude. This guy was taking pictures of one for like, it must have been a sale, and he was taking pictures and gassing it up. And he pulled out of the parking lot, and we were getting ready to go into the woods on it yesterday. And I'm fucking hammering on it. It sounds so good. It's, but, I'm so glad that thing exists. I don't know if I would buy one. Um, not for 92 or 90 or whatever. 392 Wrangler is, is, is amazing. Dude, I loved it. The little bit of time I had in it was. I drove it on the road and then I drove it on a little off-road course and I giggled the whole time. Yeah. Like it's just, so it's, all of it was it's so stupid. So I, I drove the I drove the one on 33s over the summer and I just drove one on with the extreme package 35. Um 35s, sorry. Yeah. Um so it doesn't have a lift kit because the 392 already has a lift kit. So they just bolted up the bigger, wider wheels and, and the taller tires to it, and they changed the gearing for even taller gearing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's a little slower than the one with 33s, even with the gears, but you really don't feel it. Okay. Uh, but it and just it, I, 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 I drove it in, 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 a, in a snowstorm and just with like six inches of fresh snow on the ground. It was just hilarious. Yeah. It was just so much fun. Like a um, trophy truck. Yeah, it it it. it just get it. It's, if it's, you can swing it, just just buy it. Just get if it. If you yeah. can swing it, and if if you can actually, if you're actually able to buy it, can't yeah, right? Um, because I think they limited the production on it because the production on these is based on how many uh, percentage of the of the ones that are getting halfway decent gas mileage. That said, the best Wrangler is the four by E. Yeah, what we've heard. Uh, it's great. Yeah, I'm looking forward to a 4 by e Grand Cherokee. See what that's like. There's a press drive for it in March. Oh, I didn't get which we were we were not invited to. Have. Nobody nobody invites us, bro. It's, yeah, it's very sad. I know. It's alright. <laughs> we, we got we got better it's things okay. to do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, it, it's the the Broncos fun. It, it's got pros and cons to it, but I'm enjoying it. And and one of the benefits of having the Broncos that. Literally everybody has a Wrangler, including my own mother. My mom is on her second Wrangler, so I, I just like I, I couldn't do it, you know. 
Didn't you drive a gladiator down to visit her once? Like down the down 95? Wasn't around like an auto show? I drove uh, one of the first gladiators in the Northeast to the New York Auto Show. And I think right. I met you there, or right. maybe that was a year you skipped. Yeah, I had a, I had a press card. Yeah, it I was like remember. April. It was a weird press card because usually they give you like a fully loaded press card. This was the Gladiator Sport S with a heavy duty tow package. Oh my oh, gosh. And a soft top. And they gave it to you in the Northeast. Which is fine. I mean, it, it's I, yeah, what it, it is. April. That's... But it was, but you know something? That's like the the spec that I would probably buy. Because the towing is what, like seventy five hundred, seventy seven hundred pounds. That's that's, that's the good. one. How do you? You're pretty good at finding all my pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not gonna. It's like he's done this or before. something. I can't. Jeez. I couldn't find the freaking Bronco neoprene seats, but I can freaking find a Gladiator yeah. from how many years ago? <laughs> Three years ago, man. Holy uh... cow! Uh, this this I like this thing. I mean. It, 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 people loved it. It was it, I was literally the first one in the Northeast to probably have it because it just came from a press launch to, to my local press fleet here in New England. And I was the first person to have it. And nobody has seen it. Because people are taking more pictures of this than, right. you know, some exotics that I had, you know. Um, but it That's looks flimpy because it's got the 32-inch tires. There's no lift on it or anything, but it's got the white fenders. It, this is a workhorse. It has this the, is the worst breakover angle of anything with four wheel drive. Who cares? It's, <laughs> it's, you it's not exactly... met my Suburban? Yeah. Put a Mine's worse. On it in some 35s and you're, you're minimizing your angles. You're not buying this to, to go in the woods. Not here, at least. It's too long for the trails around here. Yeah. It's a pickup truck, though. Yeah. Are you going to New York? I plan on it, yes. Okay. Yeah. We'll talk. So the breakover angle for gladiators 20 degrees. That's fucking terrible. Yeah, so you, you put a two inch lift on it, you put 35 inch tires on it, and we you're at what? Yep. It's true. You, you're improved. Are you trying to find the suburban? Yeah, I am. I'm searching so fast. I thought I had it, and then of course I forget the model year. They don't even list the suburban's breakover angle. <laughs> no one has it. It's like, are you are you serious? You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I see 16. Yeah, exactly. 2021 Suburban, Coil Springs without Z71. And then 19 for, oh, this is ride, different ride heights. That's air rides, yeah. Those are red heights. Those aren't actually the breakover angle. That's funny. That's why, that's why it made me pause because I found those too quickly. And I was like, that's not what I need. So. <laughs> well, sweet. All right. So let's, uh, let's wrap this shit up. Let's wrap up before it's tomorrow for you guys. I got more things to talk about. <laughs> well, we're gonna we're gonna do another one then we're gonna have to have you come back yeah sounds good so thanks for having me sweet i'll wrap it all up you can rate and review the show on itunes apple podcasts google podcasts spotify podcast addict overcast i'm trying to remember where else it is it's a lot of places all of the places yes i am you can like and subscribe on youtube uh you can follow camille's at car guy dad on twitter I got to change that. Why? I don't know. It's weird. Just don't be Bronco dad. Like, just leave it how Bronco you're good. Dad, like, yeah. no. <laughs> Bronco fa- fanboy 42069. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Dude, you can be all I the stereotypes at once. That would be fucking hysterical. Oh, can you put on a flat bell hat and just hold a vape pen for your profile picture after that? Like, oh, my got God. It. <laughs> That's gold. So you can uh, read what Camille writes on Hooniverse and Haggerty, right? That's it. Those are the only two. Uh, you can follow Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the real Hooniverse on Instagram, and you can read Ross and my's writing on Hooniverse, UTV driver, ATV writer, everyday driver, and US News and World Report. And then Ross is no, not like the one from Friends, and I'm at Overlanding Dad. And we've done a show. Thank you, Camille. Thanks, Camille. See you. Thanks.